It's now time for Mark Hankins, Faith for Every Nation. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. All right, well, we're just going to give you a, a quick uh, few uh, scriptures here tonight. And uh, one of them is uh, Hebrews 13, 20, and 21. So if you have the King James Version, you can look at that, or we'll look at some other translations later. Hebrews 13, 20, and 21. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 20 and 21. And if you found that, you use your phone or whatever you use. It says, Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant. So if you have your Bible, underline those words right there. Through the blood of the everlasting covenant. And then he says in verse 21 that he makes you perfect in every good work to do his will. And he works in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. So I'm going to give you a few scriptures on the blood of Jesus, the blood covenant. Because I grew up in my home, my family, my dad, mom being pastors. And my mom would do, uh, I plead the blood. She did that often. I plead the blood. I mean, I couldn't tell you how many times. But in a lot of situations, a lot of applications, I plead the blood of Jesus. Well, what does that mean? Sometimes you'll hear a preacher every now and then that'll say, you know, we don't find that in the New Testament. I've heard some say, we don't believe in that, plead the blood. But really, though, that phrase, I plead the blood, is simply a legal term as if you were in a, a court situation. How do you plead? And the word plead, I plead the blood, is a legal term that simply means this. I rest my case on the blood. I rest my case. Whatever case you're dealing with, your life, your healing, your blessing, whatever you're dealing with, when you say, I plead the blood, that means all arguments have come to an end and I have rested my case on the blood of Jesus. So I plead the blood is synonymous with Romans 3.25 where it says we have faith in his blood. We have faith in his blood through faith in his blood. So it's just a legal term, the same as if you said, I am a believer, I have faith in God, I believe in the blood, I believe in the power of the blood, and I rest my case on the blood of Jesus. Andrew Murray says, to enjoy this blessing, nothing is necessary except faith in the blood of Jesus. He said, the blood alone has done everything. The blood alone has done everything. So he said, if you want to enjoy this blessing, just rest your case, have faith in the blood of Jesus, amen. And when you say, I plead the blood, my, my, the applications of that concerning your soul, your emotions, your mind, your thoughts, come on, your health, your family, your children, I plead the blood of Jesus. And that must be spoken, amen. Amen. It's not enough to believe in the blood. You have to apply the blood, and that blood is applied with your voice, come on, with your, your tongue, with your words, with your faith, and you say, I plead the blood. Amen. Well, you got to believe in the power of that blood. You got to believe in a blood covenant when you say, I plead the blood. And so I grew up around that a lot, didn't really understand it. Actually, you probably heard me say when I got home from Bible college, then I had a discussion with my mother in the kitchen. 
And I can remember just like this other day. I mean, I just went sitting in the kitchen with my mom, and I thought I'd been to Bible college and studied theology for four years, and I was just going to share a few things that I had learned <laughs> with my mom. So I sat there and said, Mom, I'm concerned about your theology. And she said, well, well, what is it? I said, I hear you say I plead the blood, plead the blood that is nowhere in the New Testament. My mama said, well, it seems to be working for me. <laughs> she said, you are going to Bible college, and that is a miracle, I can tell you that. And so you ain't going to stop me from pleading the blood. <laughs> Amen. And so every once in a while you have someone that's a little ignorant like myself, and uh, I say, I'm concerned about your theology, but actually it is just synonymous with my rest, my faith, my confidence is in the blood of Jesus, and I'm going to declare I plead the blood. And I heard Dad Hagen say, in the name of Jesus, I plead the blood, which means he uh, said uh, he was Baptist, born again Baptist, but he said... Um, uh huh. He came over among the Pentecostals. And he said, When I got filled with the Holy Ghost, and I would hear them say, In the name of Jesus, I plead the blood. He said, I didn't understand too much about what they were doing. He said, But I started doing it, and it worked for me so well. He said, I still do it to this day. <laughs> Are y'all still here? So we don't plan on stopping this at 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. Come on, however long you live. In the name of Jesus, I plead the blood. Come on. My faith and my confidence, my assurance, I rest my case on the power of the blood of Jesus. All other arguments must cease. Come on. Every voice of accusation must be quiet. I plead the blood of Jesus. I'm redeemed by the blood. I overcome by the blood. I'm blessed because of the blood. Come on now. The blood is applied. So every major move of God in this nation, come on, has come and began with major revelation on the blood of Jesus. And you can have no revival of holiness without revelation of the blood. Thank you for your enthusiasm. You ain't going to get holy no other way, cowboy. So there ain't going to be no revival about holiness without the revelation of the power of the blood and your confidence in the blood. Amen. And through that blood, you've been made so holy that Colossians chapter 1, verse 20 through 22 says, through the blood of his cross, that you're standing before him with nothing left against you, not one fault, not one single thing. No, Wigglesworth said, not one thing in me the blood does not cleanse. So if you want to major on holiness, you better major on the blood of Jesus. You better be slinging blood everywhere because that's how you've been made righteous. That's how you've been cleansed. Now, that's how you've been set free is the blood alone has done everything. Let's try it one more time. I said, the blood alone has done everything. Amen. I've heard preachers preach on holiness and just get mean. But if you preach on the blood, the mercy of God will get a hold of you. The love of God. The blood is liquid love that flows from the heart of God. Amen. And reaches into your heart. Amen. Everybody say the blood. So I call it slinging blood everywhere. I got that from Hebrews where it says when they came to worship, when they came to worship, then the priest took blood. I think Andrew Murray said it this way. He said the sprinkling of blood is the highest act of worship. What does that mean? Well, you can praise. You understand? You can sing praise songs. That's a blessing. But the highest act of worship is when you honor the blood of Jesus. It will bring you right into the very presence of God. Amen? When you honor the blood, slinging blood everywhere, I plead the blood. 
Come on, even if you don't fully understand it, there is power, power, wonder-working power. Come on in. And you may have some visitors come in your church that don't even know what you're singing about, and it'll change their life just you singing about the blood of Jesus. The blood of his cross has become the blood of his resurrection, the blood of his triumph. Amen. The blood of Jesus, precious blood of Jesus, we are redeemed by that blood. Amen. So they made much about it. In other words, when they came to worship, took blood and did what? Well, it says that he sprinkled all the instruments of worship. And then it said he sprinkled the book because the book, the blood. Come on, there's blood on every promise. Blood on every word. Are you still here? The blood's on it all. So he sprinkled the book, got blood on the book. And then it said, and he sprinkled all the people. Man, that sounds a little bit unusual. So if you came to church to worship God, it said the priest would take blood and he would sprinkle, put blood on you. In other words, the blood must be applied. I said it must be applied. And so when it comes to faith in the blood, you can have revelation knowledge about the blood, but there must be an application of that blood. And so he would just like sprinkle everybody. Thank God for the blood. Amen. Everybody say, I'm slinging blood everywhere, man. Come on, we're sin abounded. Grace did much more abound. So I'm not going to magnify sin. I'm going to magnify the blood of Jesus and the blood of his cross. Come on, I'm not going to magnify what's wrong everywhere. Come on, I see a blood washed America. I see a blood washed church. Come on, I see a blood washed town and city wherever you live. I see a blood washed marriage, a blood washed family, blood washed children, blood washed grandchildren. Come on, I'm slinging blood everywhere. I'm not going to talk about what's wrong with everybody. I'm going to talk about what the blood did for everybody. We're going to sling blood everywhere. Praise the Lord. People could fix themselves. They wouldn't need the blood. Come on, yeah, point out what's wrong with everybody and expect them to fix themselves. No, you've got to have revelation of the blood. The blood alone has done everything. Amen? To live by faith in his blood. Amen? So to plead the blood becomes a part of your faith, and you lift your voice and say, I plead the blood. Amen? In the name of Jesus, I plead the blood. Hallelujah. And that's going to register in the unseen realm. Even if you think it ain't doing nothing, it's doing something. Amen? Amen? So everybody had blood applied to them. And so in your family, in your life, come on, you got to get the, the blood of Jesus out. Get it in your mouth. Come on. And God himself lives in constant view of the blood of Jesus. Come on, in the holy place, God lives in constant view of the blood of Jesus. That blood speaks of the mercy of God, the love of God. Come on. Through the blood of the everlasting covenant. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Can you say hallelujah? hallelujah? Can you say thank you, Jesus? Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If anybody thinks that's unnecessary, I'm going to keep on slinging blood. Hallelujah. I plead the blood. Glory to God. And if I didn't know about the blood, I wouldn't be around here. I would have disappeared years ago. But I just sling in blood. If the devil says something, you say, I, slay, I plead the blood. I'm going to sling some blood on you, devil. Get on out of here in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood. Praise the Lord. And so... <laughs> Andrew Murray said, the blood of Jesus silences every voice of self-condemnation. Woo, come on. The Holy Ghost ain't putting you down. He's picking you up. Amen. 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 I plead the blood. I said, I plead the blood. It's not enough to know about it. Somebody, not enough to know about it. Somebody got to apply it to the doorpost. And what Profeto heard, I was probably talking about this in his church, because Psalms 105, it says he brought them out 
Come on, once the blood's applied, he brought them out with what? Great joy. What else? Silver and gold. What else? Not one of them was sick. What else? He gave them the land of the heathen. Come on. Come on. If you want some land, start just slinging blood everywhere. So I plead the blood. Come on. I'm coming out with some new property and new buildings. Amen. Hallelujah. So there's, there's prosperity in the blood. There's healing in the blood. Come on. There's property in the blood. It's all in the blood. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on. You want to go get you a a few million dollars worth of life insurance, they're going to take your blood. <laughs> they're going to take your blood. And they ain't going to take just a drop. <laughs> man, last time I went, man, they, I said, how many of those are you going to take? I, I don't know how much I got left, but they said, taking those vials of blood out of you. <laughs> well, then they, they send you a printout of what's in your blood. And it's not just one page. Man, you get several pages and they'll say, this is all that's in your blood. Amen. And they even got registered the antibodies from certain diseases. Come on. My blood already has antibodies. So COVID ain't even got no chance on me. I already got antibodies. As soon as any, anything that smells like or looks like COVID, I don't even need a mask. Thank God I can breathe. Plus, you know, I'm better looking with that one on. So now there's other people you might need one. But uh, <laughs> people all want to wear a mask. Some people wear a mask. Oh, God, they're still trying to get you to wear a mask. And they've even proven that the mask doesn't really make any difference whatsoever. It just like suffocates you. People have all kinds of imaginary things that they think will be effective against the, the, the enemy or the devil or strategies of the devil, and none of that stuff is going to work. Come on, but the blood of Jesus will work in every situation. Glory to God. You say, I got blood on my house and blood on my family. Come on, I got blood. So in my blood, antibodies. What's an antibody? Well, they call an antibody. A memory cell, because it remembers the disease that attacked your body. And when that disease shows up again, it goes, I whooped you last time, and I'm going to whoop you again. Imagine the antibodies that are in the blood of Jesus and everything he whipped for you. Come on now. And listen now, and if you want to print out of what's in his blood, you just read your Bible and that'll give you a print out of everything that's in the blood, man. <laughs> Woo! Come on, I got victory through the blood. I'm blessed coming in and going out because of the blood. His blood alone has done everything. Then we'll get you a printout right there. Read your Bible. Amen. Amen. Through the blood. And the blood of Jesus and the Holy Spirit are inseparable. Hebrews 9, 12. Hebrews 9, 14. Now Jesus raised from the dead. He took his blood into heaven itself and he obtained eternal redemption for us. Eternal redemption purchased it with his blood. What's 14 say? How much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit whoop, slow down. How much more shall the blood of Christ through the what? The spirit of God. So the blood of Jesus and the spirit of God are inseparable. Wherever the blood of Jesus is honored God will fight your battle for you. I don't know about you, but you better get up in the morning, you know, slinging blood everywhere. Say, I plead the blood. Amen. Amen. Redeemed by the blood. He purchased my freedom with his own blood. It's already been paid for. All you got to do is just enforce that victory and apply that blood over your life. Whatever area the enemy's attacking you, come on, quit. 
talking more about what is giving you trouble and talk more about what the blood of Jesus has done for you. Amen. 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 Are you washed in the blood? I said, are you washed in the blood? Are you cleansed by the blood? Come on, we overcome Satan by the blood. We overcome the accuser by the blood. Come on, we live in freedom because of the blood. Amen. <laughs> blood blessed. Hallelujah. So when he goes through the blood covenant, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, and I like what Brother Copeland did on Tuesday night. We were, we were actually having fun in the ministry room before we came out talking about the blood covenant and the word of the covenant, which is the word hesed, H-E-S-E-D, hesed, and it's really blood covenant word, Hebrew word that there is no English word for. So it's in the Old Testament 250 times, and it's just blood covenant terminology, hesed. And Brother Copeland said it some other way, but I don't know how to say that. So I just say he said in Louisiana, it's he said, all right? H-E-S-E-D, he said. And if you listen to God, you'll find out what he said. So you got a blood covenant word, has said. And so uh, the terminology that's translated from has said is just the several words like mercy, Whenever they said, praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. God fought their battle for them. What are they saying? We apply hesed. Come on, somebody better open their mouth and apply some hesed in your situation. Because the moment you apply hesed, you're saying, because of the blood covenant. His mercy endures forever. Come on. And while they were praising the Lord, he said ambushments against their enemies while they're praising the Lord. Amen. 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 But it's more than how good the choir was. They invoked the blood covenant. His mercy endures forever. You're watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. Do you want to live an overcoming life? Do you want to have more confidence in your prayer life? The blood of Jesus causes us to overcome in every situation, and it gives us great boldness to come to the Father. In his new four CD series, The Blood Covenant, Pastor Mark Hankins teaches us how we have a better covenant based upon better promises. Our covenant is secured by the precious blood of Jesus. God made a covenant with every believer on the cross, and we no longer have to stand at a distance from God, but can come boldly into His presence by the blood of Jesus. Along with this new CD set, you will get the book, The Bloodline of a Champion. Pastor Mark Hankins explains the power of the blood of Jesus. This book has a brand new chapter about his grandson, Dylan, and how he overcame leukemia and a bone marrow transplant. Faith in the blood of Jesus can help us live in the reality of our redemption, which gives real solutions to real people for real problems. By faith, we are a part of a new bloodline, the bloodline of a champion. Order this special package today. Your gift of any amount will help Mark and Trina Hankins train believers around the world. Our vision is for believers to catch the spirit of faith, learn who they are in Christ, and be strengthened by the move of the Holy Spirit. For your gift of any amount, you will receive the book, The Bloodline of a Champion, and the four CD set, The Blood Covenant. Please call 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org. Thank you, World Missions Partners. Together we can, together we will. Faith in the blood, plus nothing, minus nothing, is all you need to enjoy God's best blessings. For the enjoyment of this blessedness, nothing is necessary except faith in the blood. The blood alone has done everything. That is one of my favorite quotes from this book, Bloodline of a Champion. Thank you so much for joining us for the program today. We're honored to have you and we trust that you were blessed by the message that you received. Our offer today is this book, The Bloodline 
of a champion. We want this book to get into your hands. And because of that, we want you to have it for your gift of any amount. You just cover the cost of shipping and we will get it to you. You can go to markhankins.org or you can call the number on the screen. Thank you so much for joining us today and we want you to be blessed. That's my confession of faith. Come on, I live that way. I have victory that way. I fight that way. That's my fight of faith. I hold on to my confession of faith. Because he is faithful, that promise. We have no problem with the faithfulness department. God is faithful, hallelujah. He never changes. His word is forever settled in heaven, hallelujah. If he said it, he'll do it. And then for us as well, just getting to build the relationships with the other ministers, the other pastors, getting to sharpen one another, learn from them, and to help us just grow in our ministry as well. Um, so we flew from South Carolina just from, you know, just being uh, under the anointing of Mark and Trina Hankins and their ministry, um, just the growth that we've received in the past short few months of just listening to them, um, you know, made this camp meeting really important for us to get to. came with specific questions that needed specific answers. And all I can tell you is I have heard from heaven, for me personally, for my family, for my children, for my present, for my future. I heard from God through the preaching and through the Holy Ghost. This meeting has answers not only for me, it's got answers for everybody. I'm so thankful. I absolutely love the Hankins their spirit of faith, their spirit of joy, their spirit of power, and that's truly what they've created here. Um, the atmosphere is just unmatched. You come in, you get refueled, you get refired, and it's truly a place with so much freedom, so much um, power and passion that um, anyone and everyone should come here, be in this atmosphere, be at this meeting, support the Hankins, and uh, your life will never be the same, truly. The Mark Hankins Ministries app makes it easy for you to watch the latest TV broadcast. Listen to unlimited full sermons by Mark and Trina. Read our daily devotional and stay connected with upcoming events. Download the app today on any smart device. Simply search Mark Hankins Ministries. Start feeding your faith at any time and anywhere. Thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. For more information on how to build your faith, visit markhankins.org. You can access many free word resources to help you find who you are in Christ. Stay connected with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.